Welcome friends to Finance Working Mama. My name is Heather and thank you so much for joining me today. Now we just finished a fantastic weekend celebrating the man that makes this household tick and that is my husband and the father of my two beautiful girls, Ava and Amelia. By far, there would not be a finance working mama if I didn't have this man a part of my life. He supports me not only in my career, but anything that I've ever wanted to attempt in life, he is all in and very supportive. And that goes into our beautiful girls, whether it's sports activities, whether it's dance, school, you name it, he's in it. I don't even have to ask majority of the time for help. He sees it, he identifies it, and he does it. So in honor for him for Father's Day, I wanted to make a special dinner. Now, most Sundays, not every Sundays, I will make a Sunday dinner and invite our core friends in. We don't have family nearby. So it's nice to bring our friends in to have that fellowship with each other. And most Sundays I prepare a big dinner and we all gather together. Well, this Sunday in honors of Father's Day, I wanted to make sure I made all of his special and delicious items that he enjoys, but I didn't want to break the bank. Now, if you haven't already, you might want to subscribe so you won't miss my next videos and how I try to pare down my June grocery budget. And I wanted to stay honored to that, even accomplishing a fantastic dinner for Father's Day. So I went in and searched and found some fantastic things in my house. I had to go to the store for a few things. However, this dinner only cost me $15.63. That does not include tax. And you're wondering, how did you do that? Well, I'm gonna share with you how I accomplished that. This was my little Aldi haul. I wanted to go to one grocery store and one grocery store only. I had to make some substitutions in reference to the ingredients because I didn't want to go to another store. But I purchased pie crust and obviously some cherry tomatoes, two blocks of eight ounce cheddar cheese, or actually it's Col Colby Jack cheese, cilantro i wanted parsley but they didn't have it so i did cilantro instead and then a large container of heavy whipping cream my father's day menu was baby back barbecue ribs chicken thighs with a mushroom creamy dijon, dijon sauce a tomato pie macaroni and cheese a garden salad steamed brussels sprouts and last but not least, a pasta salad, which if you've watched me a time or two, you know my husband loves a pasta salad. And then for dessert, you can't have a dinner without dessert, is my husband's favorite dessert, which his mother made throughout his entire childhood, and that is a cherry delight dessert. That was the menu for Father's Day dinner. Now, you guys are probably wondering how in the heck did I come up with such a long menu for Sunday dinner, Father's Day dinner. I did what I call a pantry dive. In this case, I did a camp tree drive. And you're wondering, what is a camp tree? Well, I live a 110 year old home and all the other 100 plus year old homes in my neighborhood, they all have pretty substantial closet pantries, except for me. I think whoever decided to redo our kitchen, um, they thought maybe that was too much real estate taken up in a kitchen and they tore it out. So that leaves me with cabinets for what I call my camp tree. I have one cabinet that pretty much holds all of my canned goods, my pastas, my uh, condiments, all that stuff. I keep that um, in a pantry, a camp tree cabinet below and near my fridge and then I have another cabinet full of all the baked goods um, that I use for baking and then across the kitchen I have a baker's cabinet which is an antique kind of baker that what they use to to hold all their baking items and that holds snacks and stuff for the kids 
So I've had it scattered all over the kitchen and I could probably organize it better, but it is what it is. You work with what you have. I took a deep dive into what I call my camp tree, my working pantry in my house. And I scavenged through to see what I can find and gather up to start a meal plan for Sunday dinner. Then after I did that, I headed over to the freezers and refrigerators, and I guess, yes, I said with plural refrigerators, in the garage. And I looked at all the things that were in the refrigerator that needed to be used up. And then I went to the freezer to see if I had some bread. Then I wanted to see if I had what kind of frozen proteins I had available. And from there is how I started to put together the meal plan for Sunday dinner. After looking through the cabinets, the refrigerators, and the freezers, then I was like, you know what? I think I figured out what I can do. Now, so let's start with the favorite dessert of my husband, which is the Cherry Delight dessert. I found a can of cherry pie filling, which is one of the main ingredients for that. Then I said I need graham crackers, and of course, we have graham, cra graham crackers in this house because my kids love them. So, two ingredients out of the four, and then I needed cream cheese. And when I was scouring through the refrigerator, I found, out in the garage, I found a block of cream cheese. So all I needed was for a whipped topping. So that's when I said, okay, we don't like, we can't use the Cool Whip, which is easier and really inexpensive because of the ingredients in it. it hurts two of the four people in the household's bellies. So I need to get some heavy cream to make some whipped topping. Now, if you noticed earlier, I showed you a large container of heavy whipping cream and I could bought the smaller one, but I didn't because while I was in the fridge, I found some chicken thighs. And then in the refrigerator, I also found some mushrooms. So I thought, hmm, I can make that recipe um, that Iden Gardner has. I'll link that recipe below that will incorporate a lot of those ingredients and can use up the rest of, or at least most of, the whipping cream. Let me show you how I made that recipe. This is Barefoot Contessa's Chicken Thighs with Creamy Mustard Sauce. You want to start off with one tablespoon of olive oil. Now keep in mind, friends, that the chicken, because we're cooking them with the skin on, is going to render quite a bit of oil. So don't over oil your pan. Now this recipe calls for eight medium bone-in skin on chicken thighs, about two and one fourth pounds. I had, I needed nine chicken thighs because I was having nine people over for Sunday dinner. Now I made sure I washed the chicken thighs really well place them on a cutting board, patted them dry on both sides, then salt and pepper them on each side. The recipe does provide one and a half teaspoons of salt and three fourths of a teaspoons of pepper. However, I didn't measure them. I just salted to pepper to taste. You want to start the chicken thighs with skin down first. Cook them for about 15 minutes on I put my temperature, I turned my temperature down on the pan to medium because I didn't want them to cook too quickly. And this is about what you want the skin to look like, that nice brown, uh, crispy look and texture to them. And once you flip them over, cook them again for about 10 more minutes on the other side. Now this is my first batch. Uh, these were very large chicken thighs. I caught them at Aldi, I think, um, a good number of months ago because these were in my freezer, which is the reason why I chose to make this recipe because I had a lot of chicken thighs <laughs> frozen. Now I had to do these in batches. My pan was, my, that pan is actually fairly large, so, uh, but it could not fit all nine because of the um, size of these chicken thighs. So I did the first uh, five uh, and then plate took them out placed them on a plate and then I cooked the last um, four in the pan again you want to salt and pepper each side and then place skin down in the pan cook for an, about 15 minutes until you get that nice crispy um, brown skin and then you want to flip them over and then cook them for about 10 minutes now you want to pull these out and place them with the rest of the chicken thighs to make your cream sauce. Now keep in mind that these are not completely cooked. Um, you will put them back in the pan a little later for them to cook with the cream sauce. 
as you can see in the bottom of that pan it's quite a bit of oil in there between the olive oil and the um, chicken grease that rendered I felt like it was way too much so I pulled out probably about four of those scoops of the oil um, from the pan and I left about two tablespoons maybe a maybe three um, that's what it looks like that's probably about three tablespoons right there of oil just enough to where I can get to my onions to saute and to uh, soften and break down and provide that nice golden color the recipe calls for two cups halved and thinly sliced onions they say about two onions uh, I had a pretty large onion and it was a little bit more than two cups after sliced but we like onions here um, in the family so a little more for us isn't that bad so strangely enough this recipe does not call for garlic so if you're not a garlic fan this recipe is for you I guess you can add garlic if you choose I will have to remember this recipe for when my dad comes he he really doesn't like garlic in his dishes any longer so good note however I guess if you love it you can add it to the recipe now this recipe does not call for mushrooms however I had some whole white button mushrooms in my fridge out in the garage that I had forgotten about and so I decided you know this would be actually a nice addition to this creamy mustard sauce if you are not a mushroom fan obviously you can eliminate that if you are a mushroom fan this is a nice addition um, I sliced the mushrooms up and once the onions really sort of softened and broken down and had that nice uh, color to them that's when I added the mushrooms to the pan now as you can see those mushrooms really absorbed all of the oil in the liquid that was left in the pan with the onions um, and I was a little worried that they would um, scorch I didn't add any additional liquid to the pan I just turned the heat down from medium to probably medium low and allow them to cook together for probably another eight minutes and once they look like they had softened and cooked um, into the pan that is when I started adding all the other ingredients let's get started on the creamy mushroom sauce now I did put my pan back to medium to make the cream uh, the, the creamy mustard sauce and the recipe calls for one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and then one teaspoon of whole grain mustard now it looks like I added two tablespoons, which I did of the Dijon and a heavy helping teaspoon of the whole grain mustard. This is the probably third time that I've made this recipe. And the first two times I remember telling myself it really just needs a little bit more mustard flavor. So I made a note to sort of bump up the mustard in the recipe. If you're not a huge mustard fan, then stick to the one tablespoon of Dijon and one tablespoon of the whole grain mustard because it just gives to me, in, in my opinion, just a hint of the mustard um, in the creamy sauce. Now, once you have the mustards all mixed well with the onions and the mushrooms, that's when you want to add eight ounces of creme fraiche. I did not use creme fraiche because I went to Aldi and they did not have it. And creme fraiche in my market is pretty expensive. So I asked Alexa what could be a substitute. And she said a half a cup of heavy whipping cream and a half a cup of sour cream, which is the reason why I bought more or the bigger container of the whipping cream. Now, you saw me add just a tad of water to that. I just needed a tad because I felt like that um, cream mixture was a little bit too thick and I wanted to be able to, to get it well incorporated into the dish and a little bit more saucy. So I just add a touch of water to it. Once I got the cream put together, that is when you want to add back your chicken thighs to the pan. I covered the chicken thighs and let them cook on medium for about, about 15 more minutes. About the 10 minute mark, I did check it. I wanted to make sure the temperature was up to 155 to 160, and it wasn't quite there quite yet. It was around 150. So I let the chicken thighs cooked covered for another five minutes. Once all the uh, chicken thighs got to 155 I pulled it off the heat kept it covered and once I was ready for it to go to the table I 
pulled out all of the chicken thighs, put them in a nice container dish to be placed on the table, and then I topped it with all that delicious creamy mustard sauce. And then right before it hit the table, I threw some uh, cilantro, or you could do parsley, it was probably preferable, uh, onto the table to give it a nice crisp look. Friends, this is so good. Baby back barbecue ribs. Friends, let me tell you, there's nothing better than a barbecue rib, and we love that in our household, especially my husband. Now, I had leftover barbecue sauce um, that I will show you how I make that in my next video where it shows how I planned our camping trip. I made some barbecue sauce. I had leftovers. It needed to be used up. Found some ribs in the freezer. Guess what? Barbecue ribs are on the menu. Great thing about barbecue ribs is it's a great prep ahead. I just put those barbecue ribs in the crock pot in the morning on Sunday morning and I let them cook for like six to seven hours. And friends, it is so tender. We pull them out, we throw them in the grill for five or five, about five or six minutes on either side and then baste them with that barbecue sauce and they are to die for. You have to try it. Now, then I started with my sides. Now I had some mac, who doesn't have, if you have anything in your pantry, elbow pasta. I have lots of it. I found elbow pasta, cream of chicken soup. I have some sour cream and mayo in the fridge. And of course, I purchased cheese in that little grocery haul to make my crock pot mac and cheese. Now, I got that recipe from another YouTuber. Her show is called C, no, her show is Mandy in the making. I will try to link that recipe below. I've made it several times and it is a family favorite. It's really easy and you can just mix it and let it cook in the crock pot for two to three hours and it is ready for the table and people will love it. Trust me. Now the tomato pie is obviously a new favorite of the families. I made it last year. I, found, I finally found the perfect recipe between putting a lot of different recipes together to make the best tomato pie, which is the reason why I had to buy more cheese as well as the pie crust to make the tomato pie. In my search to the refrigerator outside, I found some tomatoes that needed, the larger tomatoes that needed to be used up. And then, of course, I already had the mayo and little condiments that you need to sort of make the cheesy mixture for the tomato pie. So I had all that ready and reason why I made it because it is a favorite of my husband's. I had some Brussels sprouts that had been in the refrigerator for a while. I just steamed those up, friends. I steamed them up, poured them in the pan and in, in the serving dish, and I did some butter. I did some everything bagel seasoning and then do some parm, tossed it, put it on the table. Delicious, easy breezy, used up a veggie that needed to be used up. Had been sitting in the fridge, I think, for about two months. So didn't waste it, I used it and made a great side dish. And then we have a garden salad. I have a vegetarian, a vegetarian-ish. She doesn't have a, she doesn't eat a lot of meat. She eats some chicken. So I always like to have a salad on the table. In this house, you will always find plenty of veggies, fresh veggies in the crisper. I had actually some, um, lettuce that I bought that stores well. Lettuce stores well if you buy it appropriately. I will link that video below that talks about how to store your vegetables for a longer term. And I had had that in the fridge for a good while and that needed to be used up. So I did lettuce with tomatoes, cucumbers. I had some blue cheese that I found. Didn't even know I had in my refrigerator out in the garage. So put that on top, served it with some ranch dressing. Who can, who can be that delicious? Now, my husband loves a pasta salad, so I couldn't have a Father's Day dinner without it. So as I was searching through the refrigerators and the pantries, I found enough ingredients to make at least a basis of a recipe that Ida Gardner has, and I will link the actual recipe below, even though a lot of the ingredients I didn't use, it called for mozzarella, I chose to use uh, feta because I had it. It also calls for a pound of pasta. I only had a half a pound of rigatoni left, so I basically cut the recipe in half. Um, it also calls for a 
Kalamata olives. I did have that, but I wanted to use the black olives instead. It also calls for basil, and I chose to use cilantro. Actually, I chose to use parsley, but didn't have it at all. So, of course, I did the cilantro versus the parsley. And that's how I came up with the recipe. I will include the actual recipe below if you'd like to see it. But how I made it is I only had eight a half a pound, eight ounces of the rigatoni left from various bags that were open. And then, you know, cooked that up. And then I added a handful of um, sun-dried tomatoes because I had that in it was a package that I found at Walmart that they're already chopped up and they're soft. It's really fantastic. So I took about a handful of that, threw that in, mixed it well. Then I added the small can of already sliced um, black olives, put that in there. Then of course I added the feta cheese, which needed to go as well as the tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, because I always have cherry tomatoes in my fridge and I bought more that's the reason why that was a part of the grocery haul because my kids are going to want to eat it throughout the week. So I bought more in that grocery haul. And then I threw in, of course, the cilantro. I mixed it all well. And then I topped it with the delicious um, dressing that she has. And I pretty much made the entire recipe for that dressing. Um, I thought well, if I had some left over, that was fine. But I basically did about a handful of the sun-dried tomatoes with two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, six tablespoons of olive oil. I, it called for two garlic cloves. Um, I did about uh, one and a half because this is what I had fresh on hand. One teaspoon of capers, two teaspoons of gar uh, kosher salt, and three fourths of a teaspoon of fresh ground pepper. Now, I mixed that all really well in my little ninja bullet thing and it came out a little dry so i added a little bit more olive oil and red wine vinegar to it came out perfect it was a favorite you must try it you could use my version or you could use the actual recipe which i have really never made to the entirety but one day i am one day i'm going to use mozzarella and basil i've always had feta and parsley now I've used cilantro. No one ever questioned it, but it is a good, it is a try. And if you have a lot of those ingredients in your pantry, it's definitely a winner at the dinner for sure. So friends, that was my father's day dinner meal plan for my husband and for the other fathers that attended that wasn't able to spend time with their family that joined in on our Sunday dinner. We loved having them with us. It's a great time to fellowship and just to regroup. And friends, I hope this meal plan, most importantly, the idea of one, if you haven't already, build a pantry. And in a few videos down the road, um, I will show you how I did my pantry in building that back up. So if you're wanting to try that, I might can give you some tips in the near future for that but to utilize what you have. And that's what I did. And that reduced my budget dramatically for $15 and some change. So some of y'all might say, well, Heather, I think you're cheating a little bit. Well, no, I've already paid for all those. I've just stashed it and stored it and I need to use it because it doesn't last forever. And so it's always good to, if you have a pantry, to, to keep it rotating. And I used my pantry in this time, not only to to provide a great meal plan for Father's Day, but to save some money um, as well. Now, friends, I hope you had a wonderful Father's Day in celebrating your dads or you being a dad being celebrated. You guys are wonderful contributions to a family unit. I know I could not do it without my husband. He is a wonderful father. He's so active in our girl's life and he is so um, helpful in supporting me in my career and I am so blessed to have him in our lives. So to all the fathers out there, be safe and most importantly, stay encouraged.